When I went to the Theological College, uh, my wife Susan, uh, she gave me a Bible and inside in the front cover uh, she wrote out the verse, uh, Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's been a verse that's been so special to me because I think when God asks you to do something, you realise it's much bigger than what you can do by yourself. You need help. You need strength. You need someone uh, to be there to do that. And I know in my own life, uh, uh, the things that God has asked of me, there's no way I could ever have done them without his help. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is a, a helper. He comes to help us. In John 14, verse 26, uh, this is what Jesus promised. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. You can imagine those disciples. Um, it was wonderful to see Jesus risen, but uh, they knew the day was coming when he was going to lead them. And the, probably the panic that was going on in their minds. How are we going to survive this without him? How are we going to be able to carry on the work he's asked us to do? And yet Jesus has promised them, I will give you another helper. They probably hadn't a clue what that was all about. But just before he left, this is what he said to him in Acts chapter uh, 1, verses 4 and 5. He, Jesus, appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. This whole thing that one day they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on and says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You receive power. The Holy Spirit brings power into our lives. It's, I find it amazing that the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same Spirit that dwells in me. Um, I can't comprehend that. The Spirit who was there at the very beginning, hovering over the waters, is the same Spirit that is in me. And Jesus, Jesus, although he was the Son of God, he also was fully human. And he had to take on the human conditions of us. And so in his ministry, he was dependent on the Holy Spirit. In the start of Luke chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And we know how he was tempted there for 40 days. And then there's this very interesting verse in Luke 14, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that was really his, when he started his ministry, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus needed the Holy Spirit to minister. In fact, this is what uh, Peter in a sermon in Acts chapter 10 said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, but God was with him. So the disciples needed the Holy Spirit. Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. Paul, in his writings, he said he needed the Holy Spirit as well. This is what he says, For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God. So from Jerusalem and all the way around Ill Illyricum, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. So if Jesus, if the disciples, if Paul needed the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, how much more do we need the Holy Spirit? David, maybe you could give us some examples of how you've been uh, helped by the Holy Spirit. You know, Roland, as you look around here, I'm just reminded of the words of Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? And uh, my help has and does come from the Holy Spirit. Like arriving into Kilkeel at the age of 29, 30, uh, as a young rector, not really 
uh, as I say, wet behind the ears. You know, uh, it, it, one really did rely on the Holy Spirit to lead and to and to guide and to uh, mercifully just show the way forward. And God very graciously, you know, uh, blessed. And we, particularly at a, at a time of mission in 1992, saw a group of people come to faith in, in Christ. And, and then arriving into Belfast where, in truth, I felt totally out of my depth. I remember just crying out to God and saying, God, I desperately need you. And, and again, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Uh, it comes not from the hills, but from the Lord. And um, uh, the Lord down through the years has been a, a helper. And during, you know, during this first season of me as Bishop of Down and Moor of, of my Episcopacy, it's, it, it's been challenging with, because most of that is, apart from the first seven weeks, has been in, in lockdown or partial lockdown. Uh, and again, without him, we can do nothing. But again, with him gently being nudged, maybe even in the middle of the night with a thought or a dream that would lead to a, a way forward or a, a way through or an encouragement to the parishes. Uh, God speaks, God leads, God guides. Without him we can do nothing, but with his help we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. But we do need to learn how to depend upon him, how to humbly rely on him and how to look to him for strength and for help day by day. And we do that as we come before him and just seek his face in prayer. We do that by recognizing our own inadequacies and how adequate he is. And we do that by just humbling ourselves and depending wholly on him. And you know, as we look out here, goodness, he is the Lord, and he reigns on high, but he looks down on mortals like you and like me, Roland, and he chooses to use us in his mercy, and he chooses to use a weak and a frail church, even in the midst of a pandemic. He chooses to use us to bring hope and to bring salvation and to bring healing and to bring comfort uh, to communities and to individuals. Without him we can do nothing, but with him we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.